Welcome to Talking Giants, presented by DraftKings. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. We got ourselves an OTA wrap-up episode with some, some good meat out of it, to be honest. We got Carter Coffin, inside linebacker, some other stuff. Um, Justin, one, how come it keeps uh, notifying that meetings are being recorded on Zoom? It hasn't. It, it didn't usually do that. It did it to me twice today. And then two, what's, it, it feels like an like early talking giants on youtube episode because you're back you look very dim and your background is, mm-hmm. is kind of weird yeah so on? whenever whenever i have a new background it means that my main computer is broken so um if you ever wondered what my living room looks like this is what my living room looks like and i'm going to try my best to not move my big ass head because then there's an eclipse so well right now technically there's an eclipse right now because the moon my big ass head is covering the sun um bobby skinner hello yes zoom is being weird i think it did an update so that's that and um, a lot of other, a lot of other many things happening. So Daniel Jones is twenty fourth birthday. Brandon Jacobs is coming back as a defensive end in the ben National McAdoo Football League. Th- think he can do it. Ben McAdoo, um, Benny with the good hair is coming back. Is going to Dallas with uh, Mike McCarthy. Jason Garrett with the backwards cap. He is trying to rejuvenate himself, similar to Ben McAdoo with the hair. Let's see if this works out. So even with the big storylines, there's a lot of other smaller storylines. Happy birthday, Daniel Jones. Happy birthday, Devontae Booker, and happy birthday, Dan Schneier. It's Dan Schneier's birthday, too? It is, yes. It's his birthday uh, on Thursday, so yesterday. Oh, okay. Okay, so I oh, I guess, yeah, people are listening to it. And funny enough, Daniel Jones' first pass of the day was to Devontae Booker. How about a couple birthday boys? There you go. I think they did that on purpose. I bet you they did. I That's bet good you that. coaching. That's Joe yeah. Judge. Um, There actually is some good meat. Um, We got the offensive line alignment where, yeah. you know, last year we were – we were left in the dark basically until, until, you know, a week into training camp, even like the first day of training camp, we didn't really have, have an idea. Um, so I, I guess we can just get into it. And if we That's, have time, I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I, ready I, I'm in a, like a, I'm, a, I'm in like a, like just BS and type of mood, you know, like I, I honestly, usually I'm very like, let's get to the freaking point quick. I feel like just doing a simple man radio episode right now, but let's get into the, the meat and tomatoes. And let's start with not the biggest thing, but an important thing, the offensive line. We have an alignment. We we all kind of guessed that it was going to be, you know, Matt paired over Nate Solder would be, you know, the assumed starter. And we, me and you both thought they'd keep Shane Lemieux at left guard, keep him next to Andrew Thomas, and then put Will Hernandez out at right guard. And that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. And, Justin, that is that is what I wanted. Um you know, you let the second-year player stay at the position that he played all of his career at college at Oregon. You know, he played there all last year in the NFL. Him and Andrew Thomas had good chemistry as a run blocker. Um, so so I, I like I like that Shane Lemieux at left guard. And then on the opposite side, Matt Parrott is a big question mark. You know, he's an unknown. How good is he going to be? You put the vet next to him, and, you you know, you, you have the NFL vet be like, hey, you're going to switch positions. We're going to make it a little easier for the young guy, give him his shot to be comfortable. And you, you got to play into this new role, of Will Hernandez. Yeah, and even it's a good little combo of you know Will Hernandez is probably a little bit better of a pass blocker than he is a run blocker, so it's nice that he gets to go over there and he gets to help out Matt Parrott, who's a little bit stronger of a run blocker than he is pass blocker, so they can kind of play off of each other. And then Andrew Thomas, you know, while you can say that both of their main strengths, Andrew Thomas and Shane LeMahieu, um, both of their biggest strengths are in their run blocking. But they have that chemistry. I think LeMahieu's the- strength is – he's just a contact hitter. Yeah. But, I mean, but ultimately, why they work well together – Why the- – no. No, You I said didn't. Sean LeMahieu. What did I, st- I say? I didn't say Sean. I said Shane. You said – you're get- – you're- LeMahieu, you're getting all tied up on the wrong part. You said LeMahieu, like DJ LeMahieu. Oh, crap. Oh, I got, I got Yankees baseball. You're like, I said right. Shane. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Um, oh, but you, and I, I, I mean, had a great I joke, and it just land. It just fell flat. No, but I think you're catching my drift. I mean, you have the right side, and they can kind of complement each other well. Um, and then the left side, ultimately, with uh, Shane Lemieux, Lemayhew. Thank you, Shane Lemieux. Um, I think they can really mold guys together in the run game, and then hopefully they can build off the chemistry that they kind of had last year. And Lemieux can just inevitably improve as a pass blocker, which I do think, by the way, I think there's whether it happens during training camp or whether it kind of happens stemming into the season. I really do think Zach Fulton is going to get kind of a, a pretty good shot to kind of start a guard this year. So that would be interesting. I do believe they are invested in the youth movement, especially, you know, 
no, I almost just called him Mayhew Lemieux. Sorry. Um, which, by the way, because because of like the whole Lemieux Hernandez thing last year, like it was like more. It's like I just don't get why he's playing instead of Will Hernandez. Um, I am excited for Lemieux to grow. You know, like he was he shouldn't have been thrown into there year one, and and we knew those were going to be a struggle. It doesn't mean he's automatically going to get better at him. But Sh- Shane Lemieux is going to be better. Like he's a hard. He seems like he's a hard worker. Like he's a smart dude, diligent. Like I expect him to be a better player. You know, and, and I remember when we talked to Rich Soiber, he talked about like a rookie game where he gave up two sacks in a row. You know, like Shane Lemieux never like have that. So I I expect Shane Lemieux to get better. I'm I'm excited to see how he grows from year one to year two at a position where you should get better from year one to year two. Yeah, and there's a value too in I think offensive linemen just being together, right? Um, whether it's off the field, whether it's on the field and they're practicing, they're working out with each other. And when's the last time that we had an offensive line unit that we viewed as somewhat of a respectable unit that was pretty much consistent in terms of the guys that were on the team the previous year and they practiced together the previous year and let alone remember 2020 was just a limited year in general. When was the last time that we had a kind of a respectable unit that we're sort of confident in that they're with each other one year and now they're with each other kind of the next year, right? I, I, I feel like it's been quite a while where it's not like we're looking at, you know, maybe Jalapio was here for a couple years, but still we look, we always kind of looked at that center spot as like, yeeks, yikes. So I think this is good for these guys, you know, especially considering now 2021, this will kind of be a normal off season. It is kind of a weird dynamic. You mentioned Fulton that you have this young, young offensive line. I mean, you got three second year players, Nick Gates has essentially his second year starting. And then Will Hernandez, who's like the vet of the group and, all of the experience behind them. Jonathan Harrison started a lot of games in the NFL. Zach Fulton has started for like eight years in the NFL. Nate Soldier started for, you know, 10 years in the NFL. They, that's kind of got to be a weird like dynamic for those guys on, who are on the bench. And it's like these young guns are taking the reps over us. And yeah. I mean, all of those guys, besides Harrison, he was on the practice squad for the Bills last year. But like Fulton and Soldier have been, have started every single game of their NFL career for the last 10 years, essentially. And now they're just on the bench with, you know, not world beaters ahead of him. Yeah. Yeah. Got to invest in the young guys though. Excited for this offensive line, especially the left side. You know, I looked up some stats today and um, some of the stats I looked up and, and at the end of the day, this kind of, these numbers that football outsiders kind of breaks down, it doesn't really matter a ton because it, when I, when I talk about like directional running, it's mainly like, are you running up the middle the left or the right side, or are you running like outside zone? There's really no like middle way. I think they need to get better in their, in that measurement, but the giant, when they ran the ball last year, the giants ran past the left tackle and the left end 15% of the time. And then the right side, they ran 22% past the right tackle and the right end. Now, Bobby, I think inevitably NFL teams are just going to be a little bit more biased to running towards the right side. Cause I think that's just the NFL. It's so weird. It is something that every team just runs to the right more. Even if like last year, Andrew Thomas and Shane Lemieux were clearly better run blockers than Kevin Zeitler and Cam Fleming. And it's it's just such a, it's it's a weird thing about the NFL. I I don't understand it. Yeah. So even if, even if, you know, those numbers this year, we look back and, you know, like I said, this is mainly outside zone, which the giants were number one, not good at outside zone last year. Number two, didn't really, couldn't really run it a lot when Saquon Barkley was, was gone. And also, I don't think that's a bad thing to, to look at this offensive line and say, this offensive line really isn't an outside zone scheme fit you know for this football team right now I don't I don't think that's a bad thing to say but I'm hoping when we look at this year and we when we look at the numbers in terms of the trends of where the Giants are running the ball I hope it's a little bit more favored to the left side than it was in 2020 because those guys they're they're effective they move dudes I really think this offense can be kind of special um when we're running the ball to the left side this year the way Thomas and Lemieux move guys together on double teams or whatever, it's something that Giants offensive line hasn't seen in a while. Yeah. You know, like they – I mean, those guys just move dudes, and it's fun to watch. Um, So so interesting. So we don't have to have – we don't have to spend the rest of the summer, you know, where is Will Hernandez going to play Like, and and never get a real answer from anybody. I so mean, we, I, w- we, I also wouldn't be surprised if they switched. You think really? I would be. I would be blown away if at this. What What would be the point of switching them? 
Will Hernandez has played his entire career at left guard, and oh, Shane, Shane Lemieux, Lemieux. And, Sh- and then Shane Lemieux is young, and he, and he can easily get comfortable in another position if they ask him to get comfortable. And it's Lemieux also did, who, he started every game in Oregon for four years at left guard, though. I, Sh- Will Hernandez has more of a track record in the NFL starting at left guard, so I, I I hear what you're saying. I but knowing knowing the Giants, and you know even even thinking of some of the storylines that we have for this episode, like. We, we didn't think that Efedio Odenegbo would, would really be an edge rusher. We, you know, we maybe thought that he can get some reps, but literally day one, here he is, and he's number 44, which is a linebacker number. Um, and then also Carter Coughlin, you know, we, we've, we've been asked like in YouTube comments, and people, so shout out to these YouTube comments. People have asked, oh, do you think Carter Coughlin can go inside? And then both of us are like, no, he's kind of just an edge, he's kind of just an edge rusher. That's kind of what he's good at. Don't change it. And then lo and behold, day one, here he is. So the Giants have done things, and well, not even Giants, but Joe Judge has done things that kind of have surprised us and at times has made us scratch our heads, but it's worth it. I mean, the Giants, what they have this offseason that they didn't have last offseason is they have the luxury of time. They have the luxury of time to throw guys around. Um, and even before they really get into all pads in, you know, in, at the end of July and in, in August, they have the luxury of time just to see how these guys look in shorts. So, Yeah. Let's talk about Carter Coffin. You brought him up. Um, have we been shutting down the Carter Coffin inside linebacker idea? I don't think we've been like, they need to do it, but have we been shutting it down? I think we've been asked about it and we we've been dismissive. I don't want to say that we've shut, we've shut it down like mean, but we've been pretty, I, at least I've been pretty dismissive of it. Well, Carter Coughlin's at inside linebacker. It doesn't mean he's going to, you know, He's now the same, you know, position as Blake Martinez, but he is practicing with the inside linebackers, which I really do like, Justin. I I, I love that that's what they're doing with Carter Coffin, who is a versatile player who can drop back into coverage. You know, on on passing downs in twenty twenty, he uh, he rushed the passer seventy one percent of the time, dropped back in the coverage twenty nine percent, and you saw them play around with him a little more towards the end of the season. You know that Seahawks game. I know me and you both went and watched that this afternoon where they were lining him up on the in the A gap in that game and he wasn't like a he wasn't necessarily playing off ball but he was at a, at a in a position where an inside linebacker where Blake Martinez or Tay Crowder would line up. Yeah, uh, and and Bobby with that Seahawks game Carter Coughlin, you know, this is according to Pro Football Reference. Carter Coughlin had two quarterback hits in his rookie year. One of those quarterback hits came against Seattle and it was when he was lining up in, in the A gap. And I don't want to say he ran a. St- I don't want to say he ran a stunt. You know, maybe you know the 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 term better than I do. But basically, he was patient. You know, he lined up in the a gap. You know, he he played around, played around the the, pa- the pass rush and the pocket went one way. He went around the offensive line the other way, and he laid a pretty good hit on Russell Wilson that forced an incompletion. So you know, his one of his two QB hits came from lining up in that interior linebacker spot and rushing the passer from that spot. So. Um, also, one of the biggest, like, and, and this is not even one of, I think the biggest strength of Carter Coughlin's rookie season was the fact that he was very, very patient to let a play develop so he's in the best spot to make a play on the ball. You know, where he's not a guy like Tay Crowder who's going to play incredibly fast and maybe he's going to miss a play. You know, Ryan Conley got that same little, maybe little critique from his rookie year, but we like that. But Carter Coughlin has always been, you know, he was a guy in 2020 that really showed the patience um, to let a play develop, set the edge, get good separation, and then make a play on the ball from there. So that's why I think he can work at interior linebacker. You know, even though he has a lot of talented, you know, uh, traits for the edge spot, that's why I think he can work at interior linebacker because he is patient and he can still make a play on the football and he has, like, good eyes. And, and you don't have to take away those edge reps, you know. Yeah. You can use him as that Kyle Van Noy role. You know, we know he's, you know, what what did we call him? What did I – or – what do we call him when he came out? We're like, oh, he's kind of like a poor man, Zach Bond. And that's something we talked about yep. Zach Bond of playing that Kyle Van Noy role. Off of the, playing... the off ball linebacker term that I'm putting in quotes. Yeah. Off ball and like a versatile type player, you know, like last year they had to put David Mayo at, at some edge reps and even Tay Crowder, who I like a lot. Like he just, that's not where he fits best. Tay Crowder is an off ball linebacker where Coughlin can uh, do both. So I, I'm excited to see him in, you know, what would possibly be a Kyle Van Noy role. And then also, it's just, we talked about it the other day, how this edge group is just, it's a crowded room. It's not loaded, but it's a crowded room. And now Fedio Odenegbo's in there. And then the inside linebackers, the, the exact opposite. It's thin. 
you know, we're, we're sitting there doing, we did a segment on Kale Garrett, how thin this inside linebacker yeah. room is. So when you think about it, Martinez and Crowder are locks. Raglan, um, it, it was an interesting case. Um, you know, it, I'm not, I liked Raglan's film. I'm not sold that he's going to be the guy that buys into everything, you know? Um, but let's just lock him in as the third. We got no ties to anybody at four. It's Devontae Downs and Kale Garrett. And now, I mean, I put Carter Coffin, that's someone they invested a draft pick in, someone who has ability. Like, like let Carter Coffin be that role. You're like, he's not going to be worse than Devontae Downs. At least we hope not. Yeah. And Carter Coffin, um, you know, he, people were saying after we drafted him, and I think this is really the, the kind of the draft heads, scout heads, whatever you want to call them. You know, all this, his skills translate into being an off ball linebacker. So people were saying that now, I think we disagreed with it just because of the production that he put up at edge and kind of, you watch the film is like, this guy's a really good pass rusher. So him lining up at interior linebacker, the first day, the media is, is granted access to OTAs that I think really what it's doing is it's, in, it's increasing his chances to make the roster. And what, like you said, what is already a crowded edge room, but Bobby, what I'm also, while we're talking about this, what I'm curious about is Cam Brown. Now I know Cam Brown is, is kind of likely to make the final 53 just because of how many special team snaps he saw last year. But Cam Brown in college actually was an interior linebacker. Like in that, in like that Penn state, that weird Penn state system that, you know, doesn't really allow anybody to put up major insane numbers, unless your name is Michael Parsons. Right. Yeah. You know, he was technically like an interior inside linebacker in that system. And then he kind of went, to being an edge rusher because he's long, because he's lanky um, as a rookie last year. So I'm wondering, you know, why not try him an interior linebacker if that's since he already has experience of that at Penn State, or do they not really just care about Cam Brown as a defensive player because they know that he's just more valuable as special teams? I would rather pick Carter there. Cam Brown, as well, technically was off ball, it was more like, you know, we saw Dominique Ross do the same thing at UNC where it's like because of the way the college offenses are where he's like he's kind of like split out sometimes, sometimes on the line, sometimes off. Um, and I think me and you both just like Carter Coughlin more than Cam Brown in general. Yeah, he's where, a better and, football player. Yeah. Yeah. And Cam Brown, Cam Brown's longer athletic. You can see him like growing into like Cam Brown, I view as a project as a defensive player where Carter Coughlin's like, no, he's got real skills that will translate right away. May not have the biggest ceiling because of size. Um, where Cam Brown is like, I think I view him more as a project. So I, I think they're just like, hey, he's got some length. He could maybe turn into a good edge rusher, um, you know, one day. But for right now, he's just like, he's like, I think he's second or third for special team snap. So I do think Cam, and Cam Brown wasn't wasn't there either. So that, you know, oh, maybe they did and, and we don't know. So yeah. but I, I do see him staying out at the, at the edge spot. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets cut. I know they value special teams a lot, but – we can talk about it in a second with Efedio and Negbo. Um, it's it's just such a crowded room. It's just yep. like there's so like as much as like one you like someone may make a defense for Cam Brown right now. Well, it's like okay, well let's talk about the five six other guys that you know you can make maybe a better argument for. Yep. Um, also, can you read the DraftKings app? Yes, I can, Bobby Skinner. It's an interesting time of the year in sports, in particular. In basketball, it's playoff time. Big stakes, bigger promotions. DraftKings Sportsbook is putting you courtside with the chance to turn $5 into $200. That's 40 to 1 odds on any basketball game. All you have to do is pick any team that is still in the hunt for the trophy. And if the team that wins, you will receive $200 in free credits. That's right. Pick any team that is still in contention. Bet $5. And if that team wins, you cash $200 in free credits. The Nets play Friday night. Or Thursday night. Nets and Knicks play Friday night. Oh, wow. That's going to be a fun night. When you're listening to this, I guess. That's going to, oh, Friday night's going to be a fun night. All it takes to claim these 40 to 1 odds on the basketball team you're choosing is placing a $5 bet on that team and, and that team to also win. Don't forget, DraftKings Sportsbook also offers great odds on promotions on base, baseball, hockey, and so much more all week long. It's safe, secure, reliable. You can deposit, withdraw your funds at your convenience. Download the top-rated uh, DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code JUMBOY when you sign up to turn $5 into $200 in free credits. Bet on the basketball team of your choice to win their next game. And if they do, you claim $200 in free credits. That's promo code JUMBOY for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 years older. New Jersey, Indiana, Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Wager paid out 
in site credits. Restrictions apply. See, see jeffkings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling prom, call 1 800 Gambler or in Indiana, 1 800 9 with it. The Patreon crowd just saw me freaking just pop nine pills. So this next, the rest of the show is going to be interesting. That was your vitamins. It was my vitamins. Can you guess which vitamins I I, I... Harper, Harper, and indigestion. Huh, huh, no, I do diarrhea. fish oil, flaxseed oil, cinnamon, which is just good for uh, digestion, I guess. Vitamin D, even though I don't need it, I get enough sun. B12. And then apple cider vinegar pills. I don't like taking the shot. This I, I can do the apple vinegar shot, but it's like just that bottle being there. Just if you have a bottle of apple cider vinegar in your house, right? It gets like that, like little like like that ring around it. It's, I don't know. It's weird. So that's that's what I that's what I do. I just heard people going up my stairs for the first time ever. Drives me up the freaking walls. Um. You're right. Just, you got, you I, got Ajita? No, the apple cider vinegar. It just makes you a little burpy for a second. All right, you got a little Ajita. All right, uh, Afedi. Uh, Afedi uh, I'm gonna. Uh, so, th- so this is my first m- major point. And tell me if I'm reading into this too much. So the numbers for defensive linemen are 50 to 79, and 90 to 99. The numbers for linebackers are 1 to 59 and 90 to 99. Afedio Odenegbo is wearing number 44 for this season. You know, as of right now, most likely that's probably not going to change. Number four, four takeover. Number four, uh, which that kind of does hurt me, Marcus Golden. So, I mean, hey, if he has a Marcus Golden next season, won't be complaining. So he he isn't, he's a linebacker. I wouldn't read into the numbers since the number rule has changed anyways, but he's an edge pressure, which, you know, I was I really didn't think that was going to happen, I, you know, because he did play that four three DM. But I was like, I was like, he's more, he's more of a defensive tackle than he has a stand up edge, you know, because he they would line him up at th- at you know over the guard and even sometimes over the center, um, you know, his sack versus Daniel Jones in twenty nineteen, he was lined up over the center, which was his first sack of his career, uh, and he was like a true four three. I I just didn't see it happening to him standing up, but this is a guy they like, and this, you know, I talked about the edge um, group being you know, the most intriguing camp battle because there's so many guys and there's really no one has a clear cut favorite that like, this is, this is an interesting group and a Fetty Odenegbo who's had 10 and a half sacks the last couple of years. You can argue that he had the best production out of anybody that's out there is playing that same spot as those guys. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this, this position rolls out. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, because they like to use their guys situationally. So, Bobby, I mean, is does he stand out more as a run? No, he's a better pass rusher than he is a run defender, right? Like, very yeah. much so. Yeah, he's not a great run defender. He's like a situational, like, you know, I kind of viewed it on film, and I talked to some, like, Vikings people, and they're like, yeah, he's kind of a, a situational pass rusher. Situational pass rusher. You know, we already kind of view Ellerson Smith in that role. Aziz in that role. Aziz, I mean, I wouldn't your... put Ellerson in that role right away. I would put Ellerson in project year one. Oh, Shane Zimenez is definitely in that role where he's a better, you know, the, I feel like the Giants value him more as a pass rusher. I mean, we even saw that to start 2020. Um, yeah, this is, this is tough. This is tough. I, I would have rather him, this again, him, him getting a line. I could be reading into this too much, but him getting a linebacker number, you know, it means that maybe he's a linebacker on paper, but he could be taking more reps with his hands on the ground. I don't know. I mean, I, at the end of the day, they're his coach. He's working with the outside linebackers, and his coach is, you know, it's Kevin Schur. Like he's working with the outside, not Kevin Schur. He's he his work like he is an outside linebacker as of today. I think he has a better shot of making it as a really good interior defense alignment and just being being a better version of BJ Hill than as an edge rusher. That room is already crowded, anyways. You got you got uh, Leo and and uh, and Dex. Danny Shelton's a lock. You know they just paid Austin Johnson three mil. Um, BJ Hill, they like BJ Hill. Um, but I think he like could that's be better. five guys think, right there. I think he could be better because I mean I th- I think Danny Shelton and Austin Johnson play 
kind of a similar role where it's like, okay, you guys, you guys, yeah, you guys are going to be run defenders. Like you guys are just going to be clogs up the middle. Right. So those are two guys where that doesn't really relate to a Fetty Odenegbo. So then you have Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams as the, as the clear cut number two, you know, we, I want, I, I do want a snap increase of Leonard Williams to about 80% this year. Um, Dexter Lawrence is probably going to get the same, like 60 to 64, 65% of the snaps. I can envision a world where Fetty Ojanegbo is a better number three interior defensive line option than BJ Hill. I can see that happening, but if they really like BJ Hill, they do want to give him more snaps. Then you're kind I, I think it, I think this is throwing a, a good value signing to the wolves at, by putting a, putting him at edge rusher, a Fetty that is. I, I just, I don't think he's going to be Marcus Golden. You know what I'm saying? Like, I do think you'll see his hand in the dirt at times and, and let him lined up out there, you know, because he doesn't have any – he doesn't have any coverage experience. I think he had, like, two coverage snaps um, for Minnesota last season. Yeah, when you um, you and research Rick, I think, found him, you psychopaths. Like, yeah, the, he, like, he has no he has no coverage ability, so he's not like the, the you know, the quote-unquote, uh, you know, scheme fit. Um, so I don't think it's going to be, like, what we came to know as, like, Kyler Fackrell, Lorenzo Carter, Carter Coughlin as last year. But I don't see them lining him up on the inside too much, even though Gettleman did say that he can line up on the inside too. But anyway, I I don't think there's going to be like a, a set. This is your this is what you are: stand up pass rusher or you know hand in the dirt type of thing. Because yeah. at the same time as you talking about the BJ Hill thing, like he's not a great run defender, and they value that with those three guys in the like those guys in the middle. They value that to let their other guys get back in coverage. Yeah, that is true um so it's it's interesting i mean i'm not a big i'm not huge on on a fetty i think he's a pretty good player i don't think he's like i would pit lower if so now he's at edge let's go through the edge group right now lorenzo carter who supposedly looks really good right now which is pretty interesting lorenzo carter aziz ojulari i would hope that those guys would be a, above a fetty and then honestly he might be third in line with ocean you know like who, who I don't think Ellerson is third in line right now. O'Shane Zimenez, I, I don't know. Like, can you, do you put O'Shane over Fetty? I don't. I don't. I don't think the Giants coaching staff views it like that. Even if you personally do, I don't think the Giants coaching staff does. Um, and then you have Ryan Anderson and Cam Brown, who's like, I don't think we're worried about any of those guys taking defensive snaps. Yeah. Now that we named the names, I mean, it's just a matter of do you do you view him ahead of O'Shane? And also. It, are, are we – I'm kind of surprised that they're moving Lorenzo Carter along so quick. Yeah, I mean, I guess he's he's coming back strong, contract year, ready ready yeah. to roll. I mean, that's where the reports were, is that he was, like, going around, like, full speed and stuff. And there's some other stuff. I mean, Lorenzo Carter, he's uh, – he was looking good before he got hurt, but then he oh, got very freaking much. hurt. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, so – Somebody, somebody's bound to get hurt out of that edge room. So I'm th- I, I was, my next question to you was literally going to be, do we view, a f- would you be shocked if a Fedio Denegbo is, is cut? Are you, are you I shocked? I would be shocked. Yeah. I would be shocked too, but. Because Ryan Anderson is not better than him. Cam Brown is not better than him. And I think if it came down to him and O'Shane Zimenez on the chopping block, I think they would, they would, they would get rid of O'Shane. He's not, yeah. you know, he wasn't drafted by, you know, Joe Judge and Patrick Graham. He doesn't drop back in the coverage. Um, and, I mean, they they, they brought in a Fetty. I don't think – I think both of them make it. I mean, Carter, Aziz, Odenegbo, O'Shane, Ellerson. We may That's have five. to – That's five. And then Cam may... Brown is six. I think Carter Coffin moving the inside linebacker makes it – like they kept six last year and with also with four inside guys. So you have – but, I mean, I feel good about that. We got Lorenzo Carter, Aziz Ojanari. Uh, Odin Egbo, O'Shane, Ellerson, Cam Brown, that's six. And then your four inside linebackers, Blake, Tay Crowder, uh, Raglan, and, and Carter Coughlin. The the odd man out becomes Ryan Anderson. We may have to do an, an, an earlier than expected 53 man. Not not like on the pod. But oh, I think we are as... going to do one on the pod. We did one last year. No, no, but an earlier than, ex- like an earlier than expected exercise. Because I have a feeling that we're going to be we're going to be, do, we've already done this. We've already done this conversation with the edge room like twice. We, we need to, <laughs> we need to have like a full fledged reflection 
exercise where we like make a 53 man roster and okay, then let's, make let's these, make these right decisions. Now. Let's schedule it. Next week we have Oh, we're going to do it on the pod. Okay, we'll do it on the pod. Next week we have mini camps, so we'll talk about that for the Friday episode. We have an interview sched- we haven't recorded it but scheduled on Tuesday. We're kind of relaxing Memorial Day type interview. So let's do it um June 8th week. Last year we did last year we did 53 man roster production and uh, 2021 free agency early look. So maybe we could do the same thing again. We ain't signing anybody big in free agency next year. No, but it's fun to look at. Um, and you never know. You would have said the same thing probably going into this year. That is true. Um, so yeah, that's we'll June 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 8th. We'll probably have our 53 man roster episode out. How about that? How about that? And then we're then we usually do another one anyway, right? Right, right before the cuts are made. No, we just do tweets. Ah, tweets. Got it. We maybe talk about you know. Well, this, this year we have tr- we have preseason games, which I can't. Preseason recap episodes are a lot of fun. I mean, you just get there's like you have all the players to talk. You get to talk about all the players. It's it's a beautiful thing. Yep. Um, and we went undefeated in the last preseason, which was it just was fun, and we won on a game win in the fourth one too. I mean, it was a fun. Do preseason. we Daniel do we record? Jones, so like you know, typically preseason games happen. Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday? If it's on a Thursday night, we will record on Thursday night. If it's on a Friday or Saturday, we'll record Sunday night. All right, good, because I I don't know if the days have been announced yet. No, they haven't. We, we won't put out weekend episodes for the preseason games. No, we don't. Games. No, because I, I, two, two of the preseason games are home, and I'm going to go to two of them. Yeah, so which if they're on Thursday, we record afterwards. <sighs> um, if they're not. You're gonna you're gonna force me to pay attention. Now it's different when I'm home, and it's obviously different when I can go back and I can watch the game tape. But if the Jets and the Giants are playing Thursday night, which is the most important well, just preseason stay up super game, late. I guess I could. No work, no work over the summer. This will be your work over the summer. Um, so that that'll be exciting. We're gonna talk. Let's we'll talk about training camp a little bit later in the episode. I guess we talked about Lorenzo Carter. Yeah, look good cool question Um, mark did we talk about cigarettes no not yet oh well let's talk about some freaking cigarettes because i'm so damn tired of these freaking cigarettes well guess what guys lucy nicotine is a company founded by caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative finally tobacco alternatives that don't suck they don't suck like cigarettes researchers Research and developed for three years to be made for people, not patients. Lucy has created nicotine gum for, uh, with four milligrams of nicotine that comes in three flavors, wintergreen, cinnamon, and pomegranate. Lucy also has, I forgot to freaking write down the pronunciation, lozenge. I think we've pronounced it four different ways. With four, four milligrams, different. at four different ways, four milligrams of nicotine and cherry ice, mint, and citrus flavors. Each and every flavor actually tastes great. And it's convenient and discreet. Products can be any enjoyed anywhere on flights, um, at work, on the go, or even. The, I mean, think about all the things you can't do on a flight, and you can do this. Like, what's something you can't do on a flight? You can't yell bomb on a plane. Nope, I was about to say because you you like to play the bomb game, and you can't do that necessarily. No, I have done it, but I never got quiet like louder than like. Oh. Um, we were going to the Cayman Islands when we did that. We we're like 18 years old, so it's it's okay. Anything you do at 18, it's it's you know doesn't get held against you, even though that's just not true. Um, so um, if you don't want to die from cigarettes, like Justin's dog and my dog, and I, I'm sure a lot of your other your guys' dogs out there too. I I saw a dog smoking today, and I wanted to go slap it out of his mouth. Get rid of your cigarettes, unplug your vape, throw out your dip, and get some Lucy nicotine gum or Los Angeles. This is the real deal. Oh, man. You got to leave that in. A subscription to Lucy comes directly to your door each month. It's so simple, and you don't have to leave your house because Lucy has delivery down. Talking Giants listeners, go to lucy.co and use promo code Giants to get 20% off all products on your first order, including gum or lozenges. That's lucy.co and use promo code Giants at checkout. Also, I have to give this disclaimer. Warning, this product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Lucy.co, and be sure to use the promo code GIANTS. Justin out here trying to kill dogs. 
My dog is alive and well. You liar. Um, Does not smoke. My grandmother would never allow my dog to smoke. Did your grandma smoke? She used to back in the day. Everyone kind of smoked back in the day. That every everyone. I, this this I'm generation is honestly the like kids don't smoke cigarettes anymore. Now I know some of them vape, like, but even that is like like when I was in high school, we all smoked cigarettes. Like it was like every single one of us smoked cigarettes, and now it's like kids just don't smoke cigarettes anymore. I'm and a class. I'm a classy and, and, individual. And and shame like shame has been worked where it's like you know shame like shame your friends that don't have, that smoke cigarettes. Um, I'm a classy individual and I smoke cigars. Yeah, it's just wasting your time. Um, and money. It's really expensive. Um, Bobby. Not if you get the ones from the gas station. The, I, I tried a cigar from the gas station once. I thought I was going to One of the guys I worked with, he would smoke cigarellos. Excuse me? He would smoke cigarellos. Don't know what that is. Um, Giant so, stories. Should we do giant stories or we should talk about how Galladay... John Ross and Kadarius Tony aren't there. No, I want. Uh, I what what is what is there to say with that? I mean, you know, Galladay has been throwing with um, Jones, and Ryan Dunleavy pulled a whole temper tantrum fit on social media today about Kadarius Tony not being there. Yeah, he got mad at our guys that clapped back to it. He did. Yeah. Um, here's what I'll say: there could be a bunch of legitimate reasons why they're not there. But if they're not, if their reasons are simply that they just don't want to go, that sucks. For guys that need, you know, a wide receiver spot where you need the game chemistry with your QB, and I know they have worked together. Tony hasn't worked with Jones, I don't think. But every little bit matters. If they're just not going because they're not going, that sucks. Like, honestly, if Leonard Williams and Dexter Lawrence, like, if the reasons they're not there is just because, like, they're like, hey, we, we kind of want to work out on our own instead of doing that. Like, that's fine. The DBs, like, they very clearly was like, hey, we're working in Tampa. We're working on stuff. We'll be there for mandatory minicamp. Logan Ryan even, like, admitted that in an article. I can't remember if it was a, a Zach, uh, Zach Rosenblatt or a Dan Duggan um, article. But one they, of those they, guys. They did the whole, they did the whole uh, public relations tour about what they're doing and how they're working together. Which yeah, is, they said which they'd is... be there for mandatory minicamp. They won't be there for the OTAs. But if those receivers are just there because they would, they don't feel like they would rather do their things on their own, that kind of, that sucks. Because it matters, like Leonard Williams and Dexter Lawrence, they they don't really gain anything from being going through these drills at OTAs. You know, they is it know bad? This is-, is it bad that I that I'm just going to say it's a wide receiver thing? Because it seems like they're if if there are divas of a football team, it's them. Yeah, it just would it would suck that in that position. You need chemistry. You need to get 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 chemistry down. Um, you know, your first time to really. Get, let the fans see your quarterback throw to you, and we don't. Well, I mean, it. In, all, in all fairness, in if all they're fairness. not there at mandatory minicamp, I'll throw a fit. If they're yeah, that, there, I'll forget yes. that they weren't here this week. Yes, that that's the main that's the main thing. We we will hopefully hopefully see you next week at mandatory minicamp versus the, you know the last day of OTAs, voluntary OTAs that the media was allowed access to. Um, you know, I'm not. I'm not flipping it. We saw, we saw Tony at the rookie camp. So, you know, they got a chance to see him and, you know, frankly, I, I'm, I'm okay with, uh, with no Tony storylines with the, the shoes and whatnot. I, that, that bothered. So clearly that bothered me over, over how much I've been talking about the Kadarius Tony, no shoes situation that even though, even though like, if you were to ask me, honestly, I said that that didn't bother me clearly because of how much I'm talking about it. It bothered me. You're just intrigued by it. I am intrigued by it. Um, I got to think for feet. Maybe. That's weird. I said maybe. Um, feet are kind of like gross. But anyways, um, let's you do giant pedic- stories. You get pedicures? Never. I'm gonna I'm gonna become that person. I mean, I I wouldn't be against it. I'm just not gonna like if someone buys it for me, I'll do it. I'm not gonna spend money on it. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy it for you. I have good feet, by the way. I take care of my feet. Can we see? I'm actually wearing flip flops. Screw it. Screw it. And I just clipped my toenails yesterday. So see, good feet. Oh, those are great feet. Good Say feet. something. Good feet. Those are great they've feet. Get, they've been getting a lot of work, man. I've been playing a lot of basketball lately. I've been exercising every morning. 
I'm going to be skinny for training camp. Good for you. Or just not freaking huge. Um, that's my goal. We got two months to get ready for training camp. Which, by the way, fans are going to be at training camp. I'm so freaking excited. We're going to be yes. there. We're going to be there. That is so exciting that they're going to have fans at training camp. Um, we will be there, and we will see you guys, and we'll we'll be freaking pumped, and we'll have fun, and we'll shoot off guns in the air. It'll be a grand old time. Eh. Metaphorical guns. No, I'm I'm first thing I do when I get to New Jersey, I'm buying a gun and I'm shooting it off in the air. For those about to rock. Fire. Um Yeah, so no, I, I probably won't shoot the gun in the air. I what I would love to do, and this is also my My dream brother too. shoots his gun into like the ground at his house. Oh great. When there's like um, fireworks going off. <laughs> my my dream. For this training camp, I have a lot of ideas that we could do even just outside of training camp and, and stuff that we can do. But I would love to film and record some PPPs, get a table, record some shows, and maybe not a show, but record a PP, some PPPs, bang some out, like in front of where you can have like MetLife Stadium in the background. That's like my dream. I think we'll try and do an episode like that. PPPs, I don't know if we'll do that for that. Why not? I th- I'm thinking about getting an RV. Renting an RV for it. Hmm. I might be like, you know, it's the cheap it's, it's a cheaper way. And it's like we could do like we can literally just park it outside this like uh, you know, outside of the, you know, the Quest Diagnostic Center and like have guests on like, you know, like hey, you know, Dan Duggan come on the RV. Come on the RV. So, let's see. Uh, so I, I'm very excited for that. We're going to have a guest on Tuesday. And we'll probably talk more about ideas on, on, yes. on, on it for that. Um, Giant all right, stories. Giant stories. Play the freaking music. <laughs> very slow this week because the guys were at OTAs, but Ellerson Smith was at an art museum. Dexter Lawrence was on a boat. I think he's hanging out with Leonard Williams. Nick Gates was at the Padres game, but now he's at OTAs. Cam Brown and Tay Crowder were at the Nets game. Reggie Ragland is on some type of vacation in South America, it looks like, uh, from Context Clues. He never really dropped the location, but I'm, I'm using Context Clues. Chad Slade was at a Birmingham Barons game. Wow. Carter Coffin was at a slam poetry event. Lorenzo Carter went to a New York Liberty game, and Nico Lelis went to a Yankee game. The, the guys are in New York, and they're going to, get, they're going to sporting events. Is, is, that's what Giant Stories is. Giant stories with OTAs is a much boring, more boring segment than it was last year. I mean, it's just games. They all went to games. Ellison Smith went to an art museum. Dexter Lawrence. I mean, there's nothing interesting besides Reggie Ragland. Did you see 20? No, there, I mean, there's Carter. What Carter Coffin did is extremely interesting. Um, did you ever see 22 Jump Street? Yeah, I don't remember it as much as I remember 21 Jump Street. Slam poetry yelling using my hands i don't remember that part cynthia there's a there's a religious we should crash a slam poetry when i'm up there for training camp i'll write a freaking badass poem too even though you think the east coast is super hipster and stuff like that i've never that's probably gotta find a coffee shop that does it we can e- that's probably a lie we can easily find even though it's not my cup of tea we can probably easily find a slam poetry thing going on once we get to a thousand reviews me and you will do stand-up comedy oh, no i thought you were gonna shave my head your head's basically shaved already i will I, I i want it to be shaved um yeah maybe we'll do some stand-up comedy i got some stand-up comedy stuff i could probably do i'm bad at that stuff though i'm better i'm better reacting than telling i'm, a, I'm an entertainer i think i could i think i could put together uh put together a little bit of a little bit of a skit 75 percent of people don't find me funny though I, f- I find myself i think i'm the funniest person i know no i know i am the funniest person i know so that's the key to being funny is not thinking you're funny i guess that's true like I used to think I was super funny, and then I was like, you know what? I'm not as funny as I thought I was. I was just loud. Um, that's a good quote. Tweeted at us. Um, what else do we have to talk about? The Giants hired Steve Price as a pro personnel manager. He spent the last three years with the Texans as a scout. Eight mm-hmm. years before that, the Vikings as a scout, and then six months as an intern with the Panthers. No crossover with Gettleman. I, I There's no information on the guy besides just that. 
I mean, I literally had to go to the guy's LinkedIn to find that information. I LinkedIn has a lot of informa- useful information. You know what my LinkedIn says? And I know it pisses people off. It says something funky. What does it say? Stunting. Stunting at John Boy Media. <laughs> yep. not, not content creator. No, not, not pro- no, stunting. <laughs> I love that stuff, dude. You know me. I can't take things that are supposed to be serious seriously. I wonder, does it have anything else on it? Let me look it up right now. I get all these LinkedIn emails and I never look at it. Full capacity at a MetLife Stadium? I mean, we, we kind of knew that was going to happen, but it's official now. <laughs> this is Bobby Skinner stunt. Jumbo me. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's cool. I'm surprised. I, I didn't, I didn't, we weren't for sure it's going to be full capacity. I was pretty sure. I was pretty sure. Um, Melbourne, Florida, United States. I mean, it really does. John Boy Media stunting full time. Mm-hmm. I changed it. it. It did say content creator, and I changed it to stunt. Because it got it, too too many people started to use the content creator tag, so you had to you had to change it. I have fifteen connections. They are Tom Fi. Who is Tom Fi? Is that Ghost he's Tom? A, he's a listener of ours. He's a Patreon. That's who. Oh it no! Is. Oh yes, 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 yes. I know exactly. Who you're Christopher talking about. Han Han. I think he used to work for John Boy Media. Nicholas Veros. I don't know who that is. He's, are, we, are we doxing people? He's a shared connection with you. I have Justin Panic as a shared connection. No, it's LinkedIn. Are you Do saying you know who Nicholas Verost is? Oh, I thought you said Chris Rose. No, Chris Rose imagine probably being, at me. Imagine Jake Storielli in his little suit and thing. It says partner, content creator, and business operations at John Boy Media. Boring. So Kyle Condor. I know him. Spencer. I don't even know who these people Spencer Shanman? Publish publisher partnership sponsor specialist. Then I don't know who that is. Big baby David, Bill, Zach Espedito, Matthew Goldstein. That guy's such a hard worker. Uh, Lance Meadow is one. <laughs> That's funny. Did you seriously connect with Lance Meadow on LinkedIn? Yeah, dude. It's been. You know what? Last time I tried the prank call, Lance he didn't an like they wanted an, they want to pick up my call. Lauren Russell, know. Justin Panic, Michael Memes, and Pat, Pat Regazzo. Congratulations, Pat Regazzo. His yes. uh, now beat report for Sports, Sports Illustrated. But congrats, Pat. Does this mean Pat Regazzo will not help us as much with certain things? I mean, I don't know, but I'm happy for him because he I'm works very his happy ass for off. Pat. He I'm works very his happy ass off Pat. making connections. So good, good for Pat. Lance, we need to. I need to. Maybe I should prank call Big Blue Kickoff Live tomorrow. Yeah. What time does it start at? Is it at 11 or noon? It's usually, it's usually at 11. I mean, it could be different because tomorrow's like a little bit of a holiday day. Oh, Happy they Memorial said, Day weekend. So one of our listeners gave us a shout out on Big Blue Kickoff Live, which thank you very much. Oh, this is interesting. Yes, we do need to I talk got about so, because I went and listened. I was like, okay, I want to hear what he said. I got so pissed off at Lance Meadows freaking opinion. His opinion was so bad. And I hate to trash the guy, but it's... He was saying like, "Hey, we need to open up the vertical game more." You know, we, you know, he was he was referencing our podcast with Dan, Dan Schneier, and he's like, "Well, it's not that the Giants didn't do it; it's just when they do do it, it didn't work." Oh so yeah, like, like Evan, you know, you know that pass to you know against Philly, like you know, Evan Ingram, they did it, but Evan Ingram dropped it. And yeah, I, I like, love, I love gosh, how dude, the- is that that's the most easily dispelled thing in the world. You can literally look at the rate that we did at one, and then on the other end, saying we didn't do it well. Daniel Jones had the best QB rating in the league as a deep pass, and not even best QB rating, best analytics, like beyond basic stats of CPOE, completion, you know, expected completion percentage over whatever. I don't know. I screwed it up. <laughs> CPOEX or something like that. Like it's the most easily dispelled thing, and it's like dude, you, you, you just, you, you, you're just. You just shut down anybody that challenges you. That's that, that's that's the Lance Meadow way. Yeah, look how the be Giants saying all this on a podcast, but it was such an annoying take. Well, no, was... well, no. I mean, it, that he was wrong. Like that was that was wrong. Like it, it's not even like his opinion was was off base or whatever. No, like that that stat the, the stat that he literally said of the Giants. Oh, you, you know the, they did it. The, everything was wrong. They didn't do it often. <laughs> But it did work the times that they did do it. And I love how the Gi- the Giants account literally said the other day, it's like, oh, yeah, next-gen stats. They wrote this article about most fit. Now, also, 
the Giants account, they the way that they phrased it, and I think Giants fans are going to start saying Daniel Jones is the best deep ball passer in the National Football League. Let's pump the brakes on that. He was the most efficient deep ball passer. He was not the best deep ball passer, which I would like to finish the 2021 season saying that Daniel Jones, not only was he efficient, but he also was extremely productive when it comes to throwing the deep ball. He was not the best. He was just the most efficient. So the best. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was just frustrating. So I don't know if I can get away with prank calling them anymore, though. Maybe you should just say it's Bobby Skinner from Talking Giants. No, that's not fun. Hey, you know, you were wrong when you said this, Lance Metal, right? No, like the, the Giants, that's, just, that's just being mean. Like, I want to do that. The Giants account literally came out with this maybe like i don't know about two days after you said that they didn't do this they literally came out and said the opposite if they had me on i would say like you're wrong about that but i'm not going to call in and be like actually you're like i'm just not doing that actually um well actually people are some of my i called into them for real one time and it was to ask them about mark mclaurin how about that because arch Stevenson wrote about mark mclaurin um and the, the other time was a really a great call when i was like you know i respect paul a little more than the other two and just set them off, which is funny because it's kind of the opposite. Like I like Lance and, and I like Shmuelka a lot. Um, Lance, I I I, I kind of like Lance. He's not my favorite person, but I like him. And then Paul Dettino is just he's just he's just done. Like he needs to retire. <laughs> um, look at us just spilling the freaking beans right now. Um, that's what you get on a summer podcast where we're at fifty one minutes. All right, so we had some leftover voicemails from our mailbag episode. Sure. We're not going to play them all. But maybe we'll 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 do them over the next, um, you know, couple of weeks when we got some time. So we gotta we gotta start it off with everyone's favorite talking Giants voicemail caller. Hey guys, this is Gordy from Oneonta, New York. I'm at the bridge with the stream underneath, listening. Uh, I'm wondering if a giant fanatic can think of this year the coming year as win win in other words if we win then that'll be win but if it's a lousy season and we lose well at least we get rid of the uh, gentleman and i guess we get rid of jones too um but at least we're starting at least we can start anew and feel like it's sort of a win well, maybe not. Who knows? Anyway, I'm trying to think positive thoughts. I really want them to win, and I want Jones to to do it. All right, you guys are great. Thanks. Bye. I I he love him a, so much. You left a follow up uh, voicemail too. <laughs> Hi, it's Gordy again. Forget my last question. If we win this year, it's going to be win. If we lose this year, it's going to suck. <laughs> But you guys keep doing your podcast so that after we lose a game or whatever, I can at least laugh or feel better or whatever. So keep up the good work. Take care. I love the thought process of Gordy because, like, he's trying to be positive, which we try to be too. He's like, you know, if we lose, you know, we – you know, it'd be kind of okay because then you know we will start afresh at QB and get you know we'll have a new GM and then he calls back he's like you know what actually losing will suck like it's gonna suck and I I agree, um, you know where it's like yeah you can say that like starting afresh with GM and QB but guess what the heat will come down on Joe like Joe Judge you know people won't be happy with Joe Judge anymore they'll say he sucks you know like oh wow we overrated the, you know like if the Giants don't win this year. People will be calling for Joe Judge's head. You can pretend that you it's not happening right now, but if if that happens, um, it will happen. So, but Gordy, it was great to it was great uh, to hear from him. We haven't heard uh, heard from him in a long time. No, and I'm and I'm happy to hear that. You know, Gordy feels confident enough to say that he's sitting on a bridge without having to clarify that he's not going to jump off of it. Um, because the first time that one one of the first times that he called. And Bobby, Bobby, you have in the instructions when you leave a voicemail, you have to say where you are, you know, not like just where you're from, but like what you are doing currently. And one of the first times that we implemented that, Gordy's like, yeah, I'm on a bridge. 
<laughs> <laughs> but Gordy is the king. At- and I didn't tell Justin that because Justin's no. like, why is everyone telling us like if they're in their car or like in their bedroom and. Somebody was like, I'm, I'm in my mom, I'm in my mom's house. It, was, it got very weird and specific, but Gordy is also the king of the callback and that doesn't always work, but he is the king of, I'm going to leave a message and say something the first time, but then whatever he calls back and he says the second time, it is just perfect. And it compliments the first one. So, I mean, he was a star from his, like that bridge thing was that, was that, that, that made him a talking giant star was yes. like him sitting on the bridge and then him calling back and like, Hey, I just want to let you know that I'm like, cause he said he was depressed too, because like the giants had lost, like he had called back. He's like, I that just want to let you know, I'm, I'm not going to kill myself. Like that was, you know, I'm, I'm depressed about the giants loss and I'm just hanging out on the bridge. It's those, it you know, it's, it's not like that type of two thing. things. I would pay Gordy money for me to sit on a beach and let him just speak to me. Very soothing voice. Number two, I kind of want to put him in the Talking Giants Ring of Honor. Because he's that good. He's that Here's electric. Because I've thought about doing that with listeners, but there's so many, like, there's so many of our listeners. And I thought about doing a Talking Giants Listener of the Year thing that people will get left out. And I wouldn't want to leave people out. Gordy's not, but here's, here's the thing. And here's the thing with sports radio, even though this isn't like, this is kind of like sports recorded radio. When you're a voicemail caller, you are part of the show. You're not just a listener. That's my case. But there's other people who are part of the show when they make memes and put stickers places and they, you know, they you know, tweet jokes at people and, and like, so, you know, it's more than just being like on the show live. Like, that is true. like, you know, Mr. Brownson is a part of our show. You know, Glock Roach is a, like, there, there's so many I could name that are, are part of our show that I, I couldn't do it because I know people would feel left out that is true you know so but i love you gordy know that please know that please believe that all right that's a show we don't need to drag it out for any longer um what basketball game is going on right now i didn't even look espn espn i've been playing basketball every day dude i told you i'm i'm getting skinny for training camp do it i've been eating beautiful i've been eating great oh bucks are destroying the heat this series is over boring i can't stand these 10 o'clock games it's so freaking annoying all right that's an episode we'll be back tuesday on your post post memorial day episode be a, a, a it should be a good episode we haven't recorded yet so i can't make any promises we think it'll be good we appreciate you guys we'll see you on tuesday enjoy your memorial day weekend Have some fun. Go to the beach. Play a little basketball. Watch a little basketball. But until then, let's go Big Blue.